Hi guys, so today I want to do a recommendations video. I'd like to recommend five of my favorite translated works of fiction. I really enjoy reading translated fiction for about two main reasons. The first reason is that I just don't speak every language in the world, obviously, so I like to be able to read books that I otherwise wouldn't be able to. Secondly, I also find it really just interesting to see the way that a book is translated because there are different methods and also different schools of thought about how translation should work. And I think that it's very interesting to look and to read translators' notes or anything that can give an insight into why translators translated it a certain way. So I'm going to start off with a book that I've already mentioned on this channel. I did a book review about this book about a year ago, possibly. I'll leave a link to it down below and this is The Clown by Heinrich Böll and this is a book that was translated from German into English by Leila Venevitz. This book is about post-war German society and it's told from the point of view of an entertainer, a clown. He is very disillusioned with society, he's very disillusioned with the Catholic Church and he sees a lot of hypocrisy in post-war German society. I think it's definitely a book you want to read if you're interested in German culture or German history or even European history more generally. Keeping with the theme of World War II, the next book I have to share with you is Fatelessness by Imre Kertes, which was translated by Tim Wilkinson. This is a story of a 14 or 15 year old Hungarian Jewish boy who was sent to Auschwitz during World War II. I think that this book is really interesting mainly for the perspective that you get on World War II and the Holocaust from the eyes of this boy. He is a bit of a strange character because he seems very unfazed by everything going on around him and he doesn't pass any kind of judgment on the horrors that he sees, which is a bit disconcerting but I think is a very unique perspective and I think that if you're interested in the Holocaust or like with the, the Clown, if you're interested in World War II, you would definitely find this an interesting and worthwhile read. The next book I wanted to share with you guys is another book I read quite a while ago. This is Invitation to a Beheading by Vladimir Nabokov. As you probably know, I really love Nabokov. I really love reading his fiction. I love his writing style. I just find he's such a fascinating author. This was translated by his son, actually, Dimitri, and actually Vladimir Nabokov also had a hand in the translation, so he helped with the translation. More specifically, the way they describe it is in, that it was translated in collaboration with Vladimir Nabokov. So he also, as you probably know, wrote a lot in English. He wrote more of his earlier novels in Russian, but then he wrote some of his novels in English. And his writing is just so beautiful and there's so many words that are used that I just never heard of before. So I feel like I'm always learning a lot when I read anything by Nabokov. And this is the first book I read, so obviously it has a special place in my heart. It's about a man who is sent to prison, his name is Cincinnatus C, and he is sent to prison for Gnostical turpitude, which is a crime that you don't really learn what it is exactly, but it's a very absurd novel. It's just the things that happen in this novel make no sense. And I think if you're interested in, in absurd literature, which I definitely was at the time when I read this, you would definitely find this a good book to read. And also, if you haven't read any Nabokov, instead of starting with Lolita, I would always recommend starting with one of his other novels. So usually I recommend Pnin because I really love Pnin, but for the purpose of this video, if you want to start off with a translated novel, an earlier novel that he wrote, Invitation to Beheading would be a really good place. The next two books I want to mention are more recent reads. The first is Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector. This was published by New Directions and it was translated quite recently by Alison and Trekin. And New Directions actually came out with all of these new translations of uh, Clarice Lispector's novels and they also recently came out, actually quite recently, with a collection of short stories and I'm very excited to pick that up. I had never heard of her until about six months, a year ago. I was on Facebook or on Twitter somewhere and I think it was the New Yorker, they had published an article and they basically described her writing style as similar to Nabokov's and as I've already mentioned, I really love Nabokov's writing style. I love the way he uses language, so I was very curious to read this. This is interesting mostly for the way it's structured and also the writing style. So it's about a woman, her father dies at the beginning, that's not a spoiler, and you kind of see the aftermath, but also you see her married life, her relationship with others, the way others see her. And partially it's told in stream of consciousness. So most of the time it's not, but a lot of the time it is told in stream of consciousness style and you really get to see inside of her mind. And I think that's the part that is the most interesting, but also the most confusing. If you love beautiful writing and really getting into the head of a character, I think that you would really enjoy this book as well. 
The next book I want to mention is a book I read because of Brooke Lee's Project Annotate and I really love this project. I will leave links down below to a video that Brooke did explaining the project because I just think it's a wonderful project. This is Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera who's a Mexican author and it was translated from Spanish by Lisa Dillman. This is a tiny little book. It's only about a hundred and seven pages. It's exactly 107 pages and it's about a woman who crosses the Mexico-US border in search of her brother. It's about a lot more than that. It's about female power, about family, it's about immigration, the idea of borders and crossing borders. It has so much packed into these 107 pages. I find that when I was reading it I wish it had been longer because I think that the subject matter it deals with is quite important, very important in fact, and I found the writing style, like with the, the Clarice Lispector book, absolutely beautiful. And what I found really interesting about this book is that there are a lot of words that are kept in Spanish. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from the translator's notes at the end. Lisa Dillman writes, I have occasionally left specific words in Spanish, deliberately choosing not to translate. When a character calls his mother Jefecita, for example, literally little boss, a not terribly uncommon term of endearment, she remains Jefecita in the translation. My intention here is to leave a linguistic reminder to the reader that it is, in fact, a translated text, and to avoid renderings, mama, moms, etc., that might be genuinely intimate but cringe-makingly American for language meant to come out of a rural Mexican teenager's mouth. And I think this really explains well how Lisa Dillman translated this book. It still feels very authentic. It doesn't feel like the culture was completely erased when it was translated into English. And overall, I think if you're interested in immigrant narratives, but if you're interested in anything about family, if you're interested about women and women's power, then I think you would really enjoy this because the main character is a total badass. So those are five books that I would recommend if you're interested in translated fiction. I think that they all offer something a little bit different and I highly recommend checking them all out. If you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments and I hope to see you guys soon.